Okay, so today we're going to talk about more financial analysis, specifically ratio analysis. And to be clear, this is not something you do separate from common size analysis. It's something you do with or after or before a common size analysis. So you're going to need the same stuff as before. You're going to need to go to my website here and you're going to need to find uh, the don't for financial analysis and you're going to need to find this ratio and common size analysis formula sheet uh, which you can find under reference materials on my website and you're probably going to want uh, to follow along with the Apple data again right so first if you recall there are two general types of statistics right financial analysis statistics one is the the common size analysis the rest right if you remember the types the rest are com are ratios and there's quite a few. If you scroll down to this, you see here, there's sort of general categories. There's several, and there's a lot more of these. So we're going to break this apart. We're going to talk first about solvency and liquidity ratios, right? That's our first list. Okay, so before we move on, let's, if you scroll down a bit to this, this note, right, on how to actually do financial analysis, you'll remember, of course, that right here, you have to calculate all the ratios. And then, of course, down here, you then had to interpret them. So, again, this is all part of the process. These are just a new set of ratios that you do this with. Okay, so let's move on then. On this sheet, right, our financial analysis ratios and formula sheet, um, you recall the common size formulas were, were pretty simple, right? Well, if you scroll down now, you'll see that there's a lot more. So, these are what we're going to focus on today. Okay, below these, these are these are um, ratios that calculate or try to measure a company's ability um, to repay or to be able to pay upcoming debts and obligations. So no solvency is a company's ability to pay its obligations when they are due, right? And that's all related to something called liquidity, how flush you are with cash. And these are different ways of measuring the degree to which a company is liquid and therefore solvent. Uh, below this our cash values, which in an introductory accounting course, we, we won't get into the cash um, ratios very much, with the exception of the first one we'll talk a little bit about. And the rest we're gonna try, we're gonna do, uh, cover in a different lesson, okay? So let's talk about these for a minute. Okay, they're very simple to calculate, but what you have to understand is now it's a little more important to pay attention to the column headers, okay? So the first one, as you can see over here, above um, is what it measures and I've already explained that and then uh, we're going to move sort of over a little bit and this sort of tells you what it's what it's based on in other words is it measuring balance sheet stuff so kind of a company's position or is it measuring how it did over the financial period which of course is generally an income statement kind of number based formula then the next column is what we call it uh, and then uh, the the formula which is important because to understand the ratio, once you get it, you have to go back to the formula and what it's composed of. And then there's sort of a, a general target, and these are very loosey-goosey, very, very, very general because from industry to industry, the target for your ratio values will differ a lot. And then the last one is sort of help to, to get you to interpret the ratios once you have. Okay, so let's start with the first one, one of the most important, and that's the current ratio. So if we look, the current ratio right here is a company's current assets divided by its current liabilities. Now your task with this lesson is to figure out all of these ratios and why they are what they are. In other words, why the formula is as it is. So this is current assets divided by current liabilities. It's a ratio, the number output is a ratio. So if you recall, a ratio is the same as division. So in other words, uh, if you have $42 of current assets and you have $100 of current liabilities, your ratio is 0 0.42, which means the same as 42 over 100, or 0 0.42 divided by 1, or 42 to 100, or 40.42 to 1. It all means the same thing. It means your current liabilities right, are 100, and you have 42% of them equivalent in current assets. So, by way of example, let's do the current ratio for a second, okay? Current ratio, as you can see at the very top line, is current assets divided by current liabilities. 
And you want, ideally, <laughs> it needs to be at least one or more to be in a really safe solvent position. Here's why. Current liabilities, remember, the thing about the word current meant 12 months or less, right? So current liabilities means the debt that is due within the next 12 months. You're going to pay that with current assets, what is now cash or will be cash in the next 12 months. So if current assets are not at least as big as current liabilities, you better hope you make enough profit to make up the difference or you won't be able to pay the debts that are due in the next 12 months. Right? That's how you read these ratios. That's how you use them. So what we're going to do now is simply go through some of them and calculate. Now, to do that, we need to switch to our Apple data. Okay, and as you can see here, uh, it's just as it was in the last lesson with all of the financial information from the income statement and balance sheet and the common size analysis right here, finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make some space and we're going to move it over and we're going to insert some rows. We probably need about three of them. So in Google Docs, I'm going to insert a column to the right and then another one and then probably another one. And I'm going to copy these dates over because my ratios will cover the same period of time. Now the thing is, actually let's insert one more on the left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ratios right here. Right? This is a little more time consuming at first and I'll tell you why. Because every ratio is different. It's got a different formula. But once you have them, once again, if you do them properly, all you need to do is copy them over to the right and they'll, they'll, they'll still they'll be accurate. So you only have to put each of them in once, as long as you do it properly. So for instance, our first one is the current ratio. And the current ratio for Apple is gonna be current assets, which are of course right here, total current assets. And we're gonna divide those by total current liabilities, which are right here. And we're gonna get a ratio for Apple of about one and a half. Now, that means First, let's make it look pretty. Two decimal places always, please, for all ratios. So what this means, 1.5, is it means that Apple's current liabilities at the time the balance sheet was produced are one and a half times greater than its current liability. So it, with its current assets, could pay off all of its debt that will be due in the next 12 months and then some, right? And then it half again. Right, which is pretty good because remember between now and 12 months they're also probably going to make cash from profit on top of their current assets so that's that's fine right this is an excellent position to be in once you've calculated one and i would only i would wait until i've done them all to do this but just to show you you grab it and you copy it across and now you have the the current ratio for all of those years and as you can see it appears to have gotten worse but you can't do that until you calculate all the ratios. You can't draw that conclusion. Next, let's try the, the acid test or the quick ratio. Now, the current, current assets consist of things you can't very easily sell and, and get the cash for, like inventory, right? For example, if you're a clothing store, nobody's going to want your clothes except another clothing store that sells clothes that are similar in style to the clothes you sell. So it's not as easy as, say, an accounts receivable cashing that out or just having cash. So this one is, and certainly things like supplies, nobody wants your cleaning supplies and stuff like that, right? So the, the quick ratio is rapid solvency. The stuff you can get your hands on quickly as cash to pay debts as they're due, right? And that's current assets that are listed on the balance sheet above inventory divided by, again, current liabilities, right? And again, the target is, is substantially less than two. One is, one is ideal. So if we go back and we look at Apple and we do the quick ratio, oops, quick ratio, it's going to be equals current assets listed above inventory. So I'm going to sum together those listed above inventory, which are essentially these three. They're net receivable, short-term investments, and cash, and the equivalent. And we divide that, again, by total current liabilities right here. Oop, right here. Okay, and you're going to get a ratio once we make it look pretty. Of 1.31. Because you can you can clearly see that most of the current assets are in fact quick assets, very liquid ones. That too has been falling over time. Okay, so let's look back at our ratio formulas. Um, 
all of these are essentially the same. It's the same. Just follow the formula. Put in the formulas where your data is. If it's arranged properly, you only have to put it once, and you can copy the formula across. Okay. The only catch, the only catch, is going to be things like this or this. Okay. If you notice in here, there's a formula that one of the denominator is average accounts receivable or average inventory. Now, an average accounts receivable is last year's ending accounts receivable added to this year's divided by two, right? You're averaging the two values. And quite simply, the reason is, is that you're comparing the amount of sales you've had on credit to the amount of accounts receivable you still have outstanding, right? In other words, the debt you're waiting to collect. But one of those is a value that's measured over a period of time, a performance number, right? Sales. And the others, accounts receivable, are a snapshot. They're from a single second in time. Those two are not comparable. So in order to compare how much your sales were versus your overall average outstanding receivables waiting to collect on those sales, uh, you need to come up with an average accounts receivable. And it's the same down here with the cost of goods sold over the year compared to average outstanding inventory. And the way we find that, again, is you take ending inventory, beginning inventory, and you divide by two. And remember, this year's beginning inventory is last year's ending inventory. It's the same number. Okay, so to highlight a small boo-boo I found while I was doing this, I'm, I'm only human, um, take a look here. Right? I had 365 at the end. I forgot about it, and it wasn't even supposed to be at the end, so there's two mistakes. One, I forgot, and two, it shouldn't have been there. It should be at the beginning. So to be consistent, all of these turnovers and the operating cycle are in days. It's just more, it's it just easier to make sense of, right? Because we're used to days, we're used to the calendar. So let's go back and take a look at, um, let's take a look at accounts receivable turnover. So accounts receivable turnover, quite simply, is how many days it takes you to sell stuff, and then, on average, and then collect payment on account from your customers. So you're gonna take 365, and you're gonna divide it by the accounts receivable turnover. Now, if this is tricky for you, do the turnover first. So take the average, sorry, take your revenue on account, and you're never, you might be told this in a test, but online, if you go and you look at a company, you don't know. So just, we'll, in those cases, we'll just pretend that all their sales are on account, which is not true, but let's pretend. So let's take Apple's total revenue, and we're going to divide it, right? We're going to divide it by average accounts receivable. Remember, average accounts receivable is ending accounts receivable this year, right, which is right here, net receivables. We're going to add that to last year's ending, which is this year's beginning accounts receivable, because there's no time in between the end of last year and the beginning of this year, right? And then we're going to divide that by two. And that's going to give us average accounts receivable turnover. And you see that's nine, essentially nine. So what that means is Apple sells stuff on account and then collects that and it does it again and again and again. It does it nine times in a year. Now, if you remember, accounts receivable, the terms, they're 30 days. That means you should do it 12 times a year. So if it's less than 12, you have a problem on collections, right? So it's nine. I mean, it's not a real number because we faked the total sales on account, but let's pretend it's nine. Now, if you want, you can go back into the formula and you express that as days, 365 days divided by, and put it all in brackets, the nine as a turnover number. And you're going to get 365 days divided by about nine. It's about 40 days, 41 days. And it should be 30, right? So that's a bit of a problem. Inventory turnover, same idea. You're going to take cost of goods sold. So we go down to the income statement and this and, and cost of revenue, cost of goods sold, close enough for our, for our purposes. We divide it by the average outstanding, sort of the average inventory level, and we find that the same way. We're going to go up current assets, inventory. This year's ending inventory. We're going to add it to last year's ending inventory. We're going to divide by two. And that means clearly that. <laughs> Apple sells through its inventory 112 times a year, which means Apple corporate doesn't keep inventory. It ships it off to other places, right? I mean, it just burns through stuff, right? So it's, it essentially gets stuff that's been manufactured in, and it's gone. Everything 
and on any given day in inventory is gone three days later. All of it. That's insane. So how many days is that, right? So if you want, just take 365 days and divide by this whole thing in brackets, by the 112, and you're going to get about three days. Three and a quarter days it takes for Apple to completely clean out its inventory. Right? So the operating cycle next is simply how long it takes you to get your inventory shipped in, sell through it all, and then collect your money on account from your customers. And for Apple, that's about 44 days. Not long at all. And remember, of course, the more times you can run through your operating cycle in a year, the more profit you're going to make. Okay, so the last ratio I want to talk about, if you scroll down, it's this one. Cash flow to current debt. This one is important, and I talked about it almost, I alluded to it at the very beginning, because if you scroll up, too far. Current ratio, right? If you look, the current assets, right, divided by current liabilities, they should be as big or larger. If they're not, you still might be okay, right? Because in the next 12 months, on top of the current assets you currently have, you're going to add this. The cash flow from your operations as a percentage, as a ratio of your current liabilities. So your current assets plus this is going to be how much you have available during the course of the next 12 months to pay the debt that's due in the next 12 months. Get it? So how do you calculate that? Simple, right? Cash flow from operations is the only thing I'm going to ask you in this course to grab from the third financial statement. And it's simply, there's three sections on this statement. It is the cash generated from the first section. So it's going to be this number, total cash flow from operating activities. So you're going to take that number and you're going to, oops, I screwed up my formula. You go equals and you go down and you grab that number again quickly and you, div you divide it, now it doesn't want to cooperate, you divide this number by your current total liabilities, which we decided to read right here, okay? And what you get is 1.32. So if you quickly glance, you'll see that the amount of coverage of current liabilities is your current assets plus the cash that you're probably going to get if next year is led this year, it's probably going to end up being about 2.8 times larger than the debts that are due in the next 12 months. So Apple's clearly in a very solvent position. So once you've done these ratios, of course, all you have to do if you did them properly is do this. And I didn't go all the way across, and this is a big warning sign before we're finished today. Remember, any ratio that has an average value in it, you can't copy to the end. For instance, accounts receivable turnover is has takes your sales on credit divided by average accounts receivable. But that's this year's ending plus last year's ending. Well, if you go to here, you'll have an ending for this year, this current year, right? 2010, but you don't have one for 2009. So either I'm, I'm vanished. There's nothing over here. So you can't do those for this year. You know the rest, just not that, or any of them that have an average value. So essentially, that means this one, this one, and this one, right? Because this one is the sum of these two, and these two require average numbers. 